some time. But Yonki tells me, all right, we're, we're gonna test how is your mental? How many minutes do you think you can do in a plank? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe a minute, minute and a half. I'm on a plank. It's minute and 20 seconds, I think. And all of a sudden, he turns over the, the phone so I can see anything. And I was like, I can't anymore, I can't anymore. And Kenny was like, keep going, keep going, keep, keep going. And I think we ended up doing 345. Sometimes you put yourself so many limits and when you just let your mind free or your body free, it's like, what do I have to do? Just do your best. Whatever it is, it's good. And I feel that if, you, if we focus more on that, the better version of ourselves comes out. As the players get ready for the 72 holes that will decide the winner-take-all prize of $1.5 million, some turn to Paul Bamer, a one-man club fixer who acts not only as a swordsmith, carefully constructing the perfect weapon for each warrior, he also plays the role as friend and counselor, as he follows the players all over the country to make sure they are prepared for each perfectly practiced swing. And at this time, they want their wedge just a little bit stronger. Right now, it's two degrees flat, and it's uh, just a little bit weak. And that got it right on the number. And that's pretty much the end of it. Most of them are very knowledgeable about their equipment. And, and the thing I, I try to relate to them when they first come out here during their rookie year is blame the clubs first, blame the players second, because it's a lot easier to change a club than it is a player. The people I get to meet out here, and they're so varied from so many different cultures. It's amazing the number of friends I have from all over the world now because of this job, and I'm, I'm very blessed to have that. The passport stamps tally up quickly on the LPGA Tour, with tournaments regularly played across the globe. From Thailand to Scotland, to Singapore to Hawaii. 19 events across the world were canceled in the 2020 season, including some of the tour's most flagship events. I started my rookie year with being COVID year and didn't really had an opportunity to travel and look at places around. And now that I get to go outside, eat outside and explore each town we go to, I really think that's a full part of being a professional golfer. I just feel like counting down the days until off season now, is, I feel like it's been long. And you know, when you play and be in contention a lot, it just gets really mentally draining because all the adrenaline and stuff. So I would say I'm a little bit beat up, but I'm just excited to finish out strong and uh, have a nice off season and try to get better. All around Naples, Players are gearing up on the final hours before the tournament tees off on Thursday morning, some taking their mind out of the game entirely, choosing instead to put their energy into a different kind of competition. Ooh, that was aggressive. Just like you hit your driver out. So the biggest thing in pickleball is you really want to keep it low over the net, because once it gets high, you can get slammed on. serve cross court. The serve has to bounce. When they return it, it has to bounce. There's a little square up by the net called the kitchen that you can't step in if you're gonna slam it. As long as you keep the ball low over the net and short, you're not gonna get slammed on, but it's a lot easier said than done. Can you say you're the best? I'm saying on tour that I know of, probably. <laughs> Sophia would object for sure. Yeah, I know, I knew that wasn't gonna go well. Okay, zero's our start, we don't need any advantages. Yeah, come on. Oh, nice point. Yeah. So here's the thing, she's very good, but there are a couple shots that I'm better at. I 
have a nasty backhand slice and very deep serve return. I'm pretty good at the net. I'm going to remain a neutral party because I'm obviously not the best. I think so much of professional sports in general is balance. For me, that's balancing family time, it's balancing, you know, golf. Finding ways to make sure golf is not constantly on my mind what I'm doing. Two, three, four, five. I like to have connection and sometimes working out it can be boring when you're doing it alone. You know, you have someone that is pushing you. He's like, I don't want to do it. He's like, two more. I'm like, no. One, two. And then, you know, you find the string somewhere out of the blue to keep going. Six, four, three. That's the key, you know, sometimes when you believe you can keep going and your mind kind of gives you that extra push, but your body says, stop. But then your mind is like, one more, and you do it. Then you prove yourself that you're stronger than you think. And I feel that that's where the truly strength comes in. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. When it's pretty out there, when you're shooting 63, when you're making a lot of birdies, anyone has this like that. But it's how you manage to shoot 68, 69 when you're hitting it bad. I've struggled with that a long time. It's not easy to get over a five-footer to win a golf tournament and be comfortable. But only through experience, only through moments of stress, of you know mental doubt, and you go through it and you overcome it, I think that's when, when the truly mental power comes into play. The final event of the season on the LPGA Tour brings us to Naples, Florida, Tiburon Golf Club and the CME Group Tour Championship. Next on the team from Mexico City, Mexico, a two-time LPGA Tour winner and two-time Olympian, please welcome Gabby Lopez. Gabby, seven birdies today, uh, including three straight right out of the gate. How did that help set the tone for you this afternoon? Uh, pretty nicely, of course. It's really nice to start the round with three birdies in a row. I was just very comfortable with, you know, my swing uh, out there. I was really very comfortable to get aggressive to certain pins that I was probably having the perfect number, the perfect club. I feel it's just you talking to yourself and not letting your mind talk to you or your emotions talk to you and take over your nervous system. Gabby finished the first round with a six under, 66. Tied for six. A total of 13 players within two shots of Zhang Yang Li Six's lead. My goal was uh, uh, free bogeys, so yeah, I, I achieve it. Any player in the field, if they win the tournament, can win the 1.5 million. For a player like Mina Haragai, that would be life-changing. What would you buy with $1.5 million? I would buy a house for sure, and I'm going to buy a bunch of Jordan shoes. I might splurge a little bit, depending on how this week goes. That is almost going to drop. Oh. Yeah, if your eyes tell the story, she thought it was nice. Yeah, I knew it. I think I just struck it really well. Um, I gave myself some good looks, probably inside 10 feet. I mean, I had kind of two oopsies with two three putts, but I think I hit majority of the greens and gave myself some really good looks. Ever a doubt. I'm just trying to focus really on my body and being mentally and physically prepared into these next couple days. But I mean, we're here. Everyone has a chance to win 1.5. Everyone's playing good golf, and you need everything to be on your side to win. So. I just tee it up and I just try to take it one shot at a time. Yeah, Red is perfect. You can see that ball bang on line. That's boring as it sounds. I like that game plan. You turn on the TV and you see Lydia Ko makes golf look fun. She's fit. Jin Young Ko the same. And then you see Nelly and Jessica and Lexi and all these girls. And you've got all these young women sitting at home watching these girls. They look like athletes. They swing like athletes. They're composed, they're professional. I think that this level now, the men and women's skill set are as close as they've ever been in all my time on the tours. When paradigms shift, it's really slow. But 
what happens is when when it gets to a point of critical mass, it just tips the other way. And I feel like we're kind of on the precipice of that critical mass. And I think by 2024, it, it'll be a completely new reality. The sun rose on Friday morning, bringing with it a new day and a fresh set of challenges for each player as they try to climb the leaderboard. Every day, the golf course will get to be a little more of a tester. Um, the wind is supposed to blow a little bit the next three days, and I think it's a good test of golf. This is the third shot for Chella Choi. Yeah, there you go. You knew it was going to happen, didn't you? Breeze helping flags is still though. This is right at it. Oh, yes, it is. Now, Lexi for the par. Oh, that is so disappointing. It's a little bit windy out here today. It was a little bit wet yesterday. Yeah. How different does the golf course play in, in like, I guess, in 24 hours with such different conditions? Yeah, it was two very different days. It's firming up um, with today with the wind just drying it out a bit more, but. This wind is kind of what you expect in Florida. I mean, there's usually a, a constant 10 to 15 mile per hour wind always. How about Chin Young Ko, that left wrist injury? Yeah, Terry, I had a chance to speak with her team who tells me that Ko has been dealing with pain. The injury flared up again last week at the Pelican Women's Championship. And when I asked if Ko would physically be up for playing the rest of the week, her team tells me they are hopeful she'll be able to continue to play. And one way she's been trying to mitigate the pain is just by not practicing. How's your wrist doing? Well, my caddy said yesterday, number 11, this is no point if you have really bad injury, you can withdraw or whatever. But I said, yeah, I'm sick right now, but I don't want to withdraw. I wanted to play till 18 holes yesterday and I had icing last night and it was getting better. So she is now in a tie for second. What's it say about your confidence level that you can go onto the golf course without hitting a full shot in practice and going out and shooting the scores that you shot the first two days? I don't know. Um, just keep hit the ball straight and just choose right club and choose right direction from the wind and read a break right and yeah, just enjoy. It's fun. Oh, this is well struck. She needs a little club twirl, I means she likes it. Yeah, she should. This is great. A little club twirl there. Yeah, I uh, hit that good. Um, you know, those, those shots that keep you coming back. <laughs> Been really blowing here. Georgia Hall to finish at nine under. Knew it early, had the walk. Looks confident right now. Celine Boutier with birdie opportunity at the last. What a way to finish. What a day. She has extended a big lead. A four shot lead here. Your thoughts on someone shooting at 65 in these conditions and also having a four stroke lead going into uh, the weekend? If she's going to be five ahead, then I got to make, make five birdies, right? You know, I'm just going to be mentally aggressive and uh, just very proud of, of how I did it today and yesterday. I mean, all the work that I've put mentally and emotionally and it's taking me the right way. I'm going to keep doing that same thing. And, you know, golf is such an unpredictable sport and probably tomorrow is going to be completely different. <laughs> 